Well, of animal sacrifice, not the Ten Commandments. How did I know it was the Ten Commandments? That the commandments was around? The Lord said, thou shalt not steal. What Cain said to Abel when he killed him? When God asked him, where's your brother Abel? I don't know. I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? He said, look here, man, don't you know your brother's blood cry up to me? Why would he blame Cain for killing Abel unless he said, thou shalt not kill? Make it plain. Make it plain. That's, that's very plain. That is amazing. Wow. My teacher, he does an excellent job in breaking down the scriptures. I mean, it makes perfect sense. It wouldn't be no issue with killing Abel if that law, thou shalt not kill, didn't already exist. So the laws was there before even Moses. Thou shalt not kill. Let, let's go a little further and see what this great man has to say. To talk about sinners. I look at all these people. Look at this Roe vs. Wade. I don't think a woman should get no divorce and no no uh, 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 abortion. Oh, wow, I am so glad you said that. You know, I agree. And you know why he says that? Because the scripture makes it very clear. Thou shall not kill. And as my teacher always says, we're going to learn something on the way of learning something. So this is not what his subject is about, abortion, but he brought it up. And I'm going to help him out. Because I'm going to show you some verses that backs up why. Let's start right here in Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4. No, verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet among the nations. So that's an excellent verse to prove God has purpose for your life even in the womb. He knew you before you were born. That life begins in the womb. Here, let's look at another one. Let's go to Genesis Chapter 25, verse 23. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. So if there's any question about is the baby in the womb a person? Well, the scripture does make it very clear. Two people are in thy womb. Here, I got another one for you. Because he might want to use these in his next lesson or in his future lesson about abortion. Let's go to Luke chapter 1, verse 44. This one will blow your socks off. It says right here. For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Now right there. I mean, I really like this one. Right there, we can see that a babe in the womb can experience joy. That's an emotion. That's a feeling. And you know what else is an emotion? The feeling of terror. So if they can have joy in the womb, they can also have fear in the womb. So I want you to think about the fear, the fright that these babies have as their life is being snuffed out by the surgeon's murderous hands. And, you know, you need to think about 
We don't want to break these laws and stand with people who say you should break the law. No one, no one has the right to tell you to kill your baby. I mean, Israel already has a bad reputation for killing their children and sacrificing them to demons and even eating them for lunch. So you don't want to be in that crowd because this is a hot topic right now. You don't want to be in that crowd. You don't want to stand with politicians that's telling you it's okay to murder your children, Israelite children. I mean, you don't even know what's really going on. They're taking their hands, these partial birth abortions, and going in there, breaking the child's neck before it comes out, snapping his spinal cord, inserting it with a needle and poison it. All kinds of gruesome, gruesome murder. I even heard one where they suck the brains out. My God. And you want to stand with those type of people? No, stand with the people who say pro-life. So I'm glad, my teacher, I'm standing with you when you say you're not, a, you're not for abortion, that you don't agree with that. I'm standing with you on that because, see, we don't need to have that sin of murder. We didn't done all this works, but yet had that stain of murder. It's just like you don't vote. For those who want to allow homosexuals to marry. Because now you have now been a partaker of their evil deeds. Same thing goes with this abortion. And sisters. If you got that evil spirit of death. That you want to kill your child. I'm going to urge you to pray and repent. And get that mind right. Because the scripture says. As the man thinketh. So is he. And out of your mouth. Will come your judgment. So repent. Of your murderous thoughts. Before Ezekiel 13. Verses 3 and 4 come upon you. And for those that's. Done this thing. In ignorance. Ask the Lord. What he'll have you do. To make up for it. What if Mary, who was a virgin, decided to kill the baby and be no Messiah? Where will we be to this day? So think about it. You don't want that on your conscience. You don't want to stand with people who want to go out and say, we have a right to kill our babies. You then now become aligned with the forces of evil. So I thank you, Brother Bowie, for making that statement of not being for abortion. Wake these sisters up. Save them from their murderous thoughts. Save them from their murders.